Hello, and welcome to Film Slam Stream's post-film conversation for Seize the Legacy of the Land. My name is Eric Seiler, and I'm an instructor of film, media arts, and communications, as well as moderator for this conversation. We are very pleased to be joined by the director of Seize the Legacy of the Land, Fernanda Valencia. Fernanda, Fernanda Valencia is a, a award-winning um, director and writer um, who has you know produced um, other films that have won awards and he is joining us now on his way back to um, New York City. Hello Fernando and welcome. Hi Eric, uh, thank you so much for having me today with you. It's a pleasure to meet you virtually and have this opportunity to, sh to share some ideas with your audience. Well great, it's great to have you here. Um, since this film is in Spanish, Sometimes we do generate an audience of viewers that speak Spanish. Can you say a special hello to them in Spanish? Of course. Um, super happy to do it. Uh, hola a todos y todas. Es un gusto eh, saludarles. Eh, mi nombre es Fernando Valencia. Eh, nací y crecí en México. Y es un gusto estar con ustedes esta mañana. Well, thank you for that. Let's get right into this film. Very interesting documentary, um, you know, filmed in, in Mexico. Uh, you know, we had a chance to talk before the interview, and I know you shared with me this documentary found you. You didn't find it. Explain to our audience, how did this documentary find you? For sure, yeah. That's that's uh, something interesting because, as you just mentioned, I was not looking for this story. Uh, at that time, I was living in Ecuador. Um, that was uh, 2017. I was in the process of moving in New York. Um, and a good friend of mine who was just like finishing his MA program in Spain told me, hey, we need to create a film out of my final dissertation. Wow. I've been working about I, I with different uh Farmers around Mexico voting Jalisco State and Chiapas State, and I would like to uh, tell their stories because if I keep those stories on paper somewhere in a library, it's gonna that that, that legacy is gonna be dead. So we need to create something cool out of this. So let's let's work together. So we started talking about like potential ideas for the film. What was important to say. And then he introduced me with Camilo and Ramon that are both the main characters of the film. And um, yeah, as soon as I met them, I realized that uh, there were some, um, that they were worried about the future. Like what is gonna happen with my seeds? What is gonna happen with my land? I'm getting old. What is gonna happen with my knowledge, which is even more important than the seeds, I, I believe. So that that caught me, and I said, "Yeah, there is a story here that we can tell, that we can share, and it's worth it to invest time, money, and every single resource that we have available to create this movie." So, tell us a little bit about the production process. Once you uh, <clears throat> met uh, Ramon and Cam Camilo, um, <clears throat> how much time did you spend with them um, before you started filming? How long did you take to film? and edit just take us briefly to the whole production process yeah sure happy to do so so i met camilo and ramon <clears throat> um early 2018 um so i met them and we started collecting some footage aiming to create a teaser so we can fund the project so we collect a few shots we asked them to walk around, pick some, um, uh, some. I mean, like work around their, their 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 lands and do some activities. So we collect that content, and that was like a, kind of the first step that we did. Um, based on that, every single year, the film, Mexican Film Institute opened a call for projects, so you can apply for funding for short films. So we apply, and. Um, on May that year, that year, we were, they announced us as one of the winners of the contest. So we get funding for, for producing the film. So at that moment, it was 
maybe like the break point when we say, oh, this is happening. This is not just like uh, something that we want to do. We have already the resources to do it. So we started filming on June 2011, uh, 2018, like formally speaking, like, oh, okay, we are going to go three days with Camilo and we are going to film this, this and that. That's This is the plan. And then we are going to head Ramon's house and film this, um, this and that. So it was more like a, um, like a different stage of the process. We start filming, we start visiting them throughout a year. Why a year? I mean, it is a short film. It could have been just like a two, two or three days filming, but because of the, so we wanted to show the whole process, the whole cycle. So for those who are not familiar with corn, uh, rural areas, um, in Mexico and mostly in all over Latin America, people grow food on a cycle, on a cycle um, basis. So you prepare the land, you plant the seed, you wait for the, it to grow and then to harvest. So basically, and they depend not on any like uh, irrigation system, but just like the rain, basically, that like the season, rainy season. So we were hoping to capture every single step all the way from the very beginning until the end of the cycle. So it took us like a year to gather all the content. Um, and also Camilo and Ramon, they both are part of a network of farmers in Mexico. Um, and they gather once a year to share knowledge and to share seeds. So we asked them specifically that we were willing to film that event, that festival. Like, so the festival that year, luckily for us, happened to be in the same town that Camilo lives in. So it was super organic, the way that everything came together. So we were able to film the festival that year. So let's say that the whole shooting, the whole filming portion of the process took us a year. After that, we started the post-production stage of the film. However, uh, due to some personal issues, uh, not mine, I mean, I'm talking about the editor of the film, and then the pandemic hit us. So that took us a bit longer than expected. And we ended the film by um, November, no, November 2000, no, 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 January 2021. So we were ready at that point to send over to film festivals and start like the distribution cycle. Well, well, one thing that just impresses me is your diligence with the film, with the film, you know, setting out to spend a year so we can, um, you can bring to us the entire um, process and the challenges and so forth. So that's uh, very impressive. Uh, what would you change? Is there anything you would change in this um, approach to the film or just the film itself? Mm, that's a really good question. Actually, when I when I read the set of questions that you sent me in advance for this interview, I was, oh, this is this is a, the tough one. Um, I mean, because I really like what I did. I'm super proud of my film. However, every time I watch it, I experience it in a different way. Like I feel, oh, I should have done this. Oh my God, this is not like a good call. That was not a good call. <laughs> so, uh -huh. um, so I feel like when it comes to film, the, the the language that you use to create a film, from a narrative perspective, it is a huge world. There's a lot of different ways to tell a story. So, if I were able to change something, it would be to give it more space to breathe between sequences. Like, because I feel like Camilo and Ramon are super wisdom. They have a lot of knowledge and they are like throwing idea. And after a few seconds, they are throwing a different idea and both are super powerful. So what happened if I have a few seconds to breathe and digest? Not not me as a director, me as, a, as someone who is watching the film, right? Um, and also maybe use some sort of uh, 
use use the audiovisual language in a more poetic way, you know. So I would like to, I I would have that that's something that I would done differently if I had the chance to. But that's that's me talking like a few years after, you know. So I don't want to be hard on myself because that's something that could be easy like a, a, like an easy mistake to 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 be. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that answers your question, but but um, yeah, that will be the the the, the answer. Well, no, no, you did you did answer the question. One thing that I know that's what I enjoyed was um, doing the credits. You had outtakes too, so um, uh, you know it's just good watching some of the things that didn't make it into the film because I guess you know it just didn't really flow with the story. So it was kind of nice to see. The film after the film. <laughs> totally, totally. And, yeah. and you know, something super ch challenging was to make fit all the content, not make fit all the content, but for example, yeah, campesin, uh, farmers in Mexico, campesinos in Mexico, um, they are like, their knowledge goes, I mean, th there is nothing on paper. All they know lives in here. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's said by their stories. So we got like, tons of hours of interview you know it's like it was super challenging to pick oh i need this portion of the interview this line is super powerful let's keep it let's 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 use it for the film so but there were a lot, a lot of really cool things that happened that didn't make it into the film because it was just too much it was it, we cannot like it was like super hard to uh condense all the richness in just 16 minutes it was super hard but uh i think we we, we did a good job <laughs> oh you absolutely you did and, and that leads me to my next question what were you hoping um to achieve with this film were you looking to raise awareness were you um well what were you looking to do yeah at the very beginning i gotta be honest i was looking to get into like famous film festivals i was dreaming to be in like the top Film festivals in, in in Mexico, in the U.S., and some other countries, because I, I I'm, I'm trying to make a, a space for myself in the industry, but uh, but this film taught me that that was not the goal intended. So as soon as my film started, um, it cycle in film festivals and like more like community based screenings. I learned that that film can speak with a lot of other people that it is not on those big stages. You know what I mean? So right. that's something that I learned. So I had to pivot in the middle of the way and say, in the middle of the road and say, this is not what I should be looking for. What I need to do now is to create different a different strategy so my film can raise awareness, um, and even be like kind of a mirror for those who are working in the fields. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had the opportunity to show it in the Bronx in New York City. And a few migrants from Mexico watch it. And they told me, thank you to your film. I now understood that I'm going to keep on supporting my grandma or my mom on um, growing food in their lands. They every single year ask me to send them money so they are able to pay someone to work their lands and grow corn. But I told him, why are you doing that? You are super old. The land is not a business. Uh, you better, I better send you money for you be able to get some corn in the plaza, in the, in the, in the, in the main square in the town. But, but when I saw your film, when I watched it, I learned that they love what they do. It is not a matter of they can if they can get it with money or not. It is a matter that they love what they do and they love their seeds and they love their land. So when that happened to me, it's like, oh my God, it is not just people in the nonprofit sector or the film festival sector. It is also like the people who have lived that experience, who have been in the farms, who have been in the rural area in, and they're familiar with rural Mexico because they also interact with the movie in a really cool way. So, well, why, why is it, from work on this film, um, why do you think um, younger people are not interested in working the land like their parents and their ancestors did? 
I would say that I mean it, it is not trendy now. Like you know, like everything now is like fast. Fast. Uh, people is looking for earning money, and farm is not longer an option. Financially speaking, uh, at least in Mexico, it's been super hard from the nineties. From the 50s 60s maybe on mm. for people to live in the, to make a living out of farming right um agro industrial the agro industry is growing but small farmers are just like disappearing so it is not a way of life uh, um, nowadays so i don't blame people young people who is not interested in this they are looking some other ways to earn money to make a living to get access to uh, own a house to get a car to get proper education so when you have those resources handy you gotta look for them so it is not it is a super complex situation it is not easy just to say oh these people don't want to um keep on doing what their parents love it is more deep than that it is more complex than that so that's why it was important to me to tell this story like hey guys we need to pay attention not just people who left the rural mexico but also us who live in huge cities, big cities, because we, because we are eating because of that people. So there is like a divorce between cities and rural rural areas. So what we are gonna do? It is not just their responsibility who are like it is not the responsibility. It is not it is not just the responsibility of those who are growing food. It is the responsibility of all of us, even those who are eating that food. You know, it's like kind of um, we need to work together. To, to 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 erase that that like wall in between the cities and the on the and the rural areas and came back together and say we need to figure out this out because Mexico has a deep history in relationship with the corn. You know, we are like about to lose if we don't pay attention the heritage, not just in terms of like seeds and but also the knowledge that has been like um, supporting this. Um, I mean, it is not just a matter of the seeds. It is a matter of the knowledge which is behind that seeds. You know, like allow campesinos and farmers to produce food for us. Yeah, that's key, the knowledge on losing that. But thankfully, we have like a documentary like yours that can help in a little bit to preserve some of that knowledge to too as well. Um, so in a couple minutes we have left, uh, well, what's next for you? Do you plan to make this into a feature or are you turning your sights towards another project? Not sure if you heard that. I think we froze for a little bit. Is still there with uh, us? Oh, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Oh my god! Okay, sorry about it. No, <laughs> what I was saying is that um, I'm not looking to create to create a feature film out of this project. Um, more like on the process of creating a new feature film, but you know, like it's a different story. Um, I'm I'm working on um, film about fatherhood. Uh, I just became a dad. So I've been working with my little daughter uh, at home, getting some content, some food ash, and I'm trying to create a story out of this. I'm working on the script now, and hopefully I, get, I, get, I can get some funding next year and keep on working on this project. But it's going to be a different thing this time, more like a personal story instead of someone else. All right. Well, fair enough. Uh, we look forward to seeing that. Um, in the near future. Um, sure. Fernando, yes, Fernando Valencia, director of The Legacy of the Land of the Seas. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, can you say goodbye in Spanish to uh, students that are studying Spanish? For sure. I, muchísimas gracias por escuchar esta pequeña entrevista. Espero que eh, hayan disfrutado y les mando un abrazo fuerte y un saludo hasta donde nos estén observando. Que pasen una excelente tarde. Thank you for that. And thank you to our viewers for joining us for this important and invigorating conversation.
For more information about our upcoming film festival, please visit us at clevelandfilm.org. I'm Eric Seiler. Thank you.